able to join us today. Today we are going to be talking about forgiveness. Um, I'm going to be talking about two aspects of forgiveness and how God forgives us and we need to forgive others. So let's take a look at how God forgives us. He forgave us. So I want to read a verse in Romans 3, 23 through 24. It says, For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. So one part I want to make mention in there is it says, For everyone has sinned. None of us are sinless. We've all made mistakes. We've all done things that we shouldn't have done. And so it says, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, because he is a gracious God, it says, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. So do you remember why Jesus came to earth? Right, He came to earth so that he could take our punishment for our sins so that we can be forgiven. And it didn't end there. God rose Jesus from the dead. So another verse I want to take a look at is in Psalms 86, verse 5. It says, Oh Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. So it says, you are so good and you are so ready to forgive. God is ready to forgive you. All you have to do is ask him for forgiveness. And we can be cleansed and free from any mistake that we've ever made. Isn't that amazing? Another verse, um, just to reiterate that, is in 1 John um, 1, 9. It says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. So there it is again, is if we confess our sins to God, when we go and repent, it says he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. That is a promise and we can grasp hold of it. All we have to do is go to God and ask him for forgiveness. No matter how big um, the mistake or how small the mistake is, he is ready to forgive you. So now we're going to take a look at, because God has forgiven us, now we ought to forgive others. All right, so we're going to be looking at some passages um, and explaining how we really need to forgive those who might have wronged us, or um, even if it's hard. Okay, so let's dive into Matthew 6, 14 through 15. It says, if you forgive those who sinned against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now, I don't know about you, but I want the Father to be forgiving me of my sins, okay? So in order for me to be forgiven, I must forgive others as well. Um, a story, uh, a parable in the Bible that explains this really well is um, in Matthew 18. Now I'm just going to tell you the story, but there was a man, okay, and he owed a lot, a lot, a lot of debt to this king. Now the king, right, he was uh, collecting up uh, his money and he's like, oh, you owe me however much. It was a grand amount of money, I can say that. And uh, the guy was begged him and said, please have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And so the king, you know, he felt sorry for him. So he's like, okay, I've canceled your debt. Um, you're free. You don't have to pay me anything. And so the man, he he left and he, he was shown mercy by the king. Well, this is where the sad part of the story happens is that man who just got forgiven of a large sum of debt went to one of his servants and demanded, and this and his servant only owed him very small amount compared to what he owed the king. And so anyways, he went and he said, you better give me back my money. And then his servant said, please, please have mercy on me. And the man who was shown mercy by the king refused. He did not show mercy to his servant. 
and some people nearby saw what happened. So they took that news to the king and they said, you remember that guy that you just like, like just canceled all that large sum of debt that he owed you? Well, he just went and was being mean and trying to get his money out of another guy and did not show mercy towards him at all. That was what they were explaining to the king. So the king became furious. He had that man come back and he said, what have you done? Like you fool, right? And he um, actually, he, he was like, you know what? Because of what you've done, you're going to be going to jail until you can pay every cent of that large, large, large sum of debt was paid off. Now, I don't know about if you guys know this, but when you're in jail, there's no way to make money. So he was pretty much there for good. But did you see the difference? If that man, he had been shown great forgiveness, right? But he didn't show it to his fellow man. And because of that, there was consequences. We need to be, because we have a God that has forgiven us of all the wrong things that we've done, we need to show forgiveness to others for the Maybe it's a big thing. Maybe it's a small thing. It doesn't matter. We still need to do our part and forgive. Do you think forgiving someone is an act of love? Well, I want to read this verse. It's in John 13, 34. It says, so now I'm giving you a new commandment. So let's pay attention to this new commandment. It says, so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So by forgiving other people, that's actually proving forgiveness is an act of love, right? So by forgiving other people, that is actually proving to the world that you are God's disciples. So forgiving someone is also an act of love. And we need, and it says here, a new commandment is to love each other. In order to love each other, we must forgive each other as well. You see, God showed his great love by sending Jesus Christ to this earth to take the punishment for our sins so that we could be forgiven by only having to just go to the Father and ask for forgiveness. We don't have to have this grand punishment for our sins because it was taken by Jesus Christ. The last verse I want to read to you guys is in Matthew 5, 7. And this is the memory verse. So I would like you guys to write that down. It's Matthew 5, 7 and memorize it. It's one to really hold on to. And it says, God blesses those who are merciful. Do you want to be blessed? Then you need to be merciful. Don't be like that one guy who didn't show mercy to his servant. Be like the king who was like, hey, I want to show mercy. Okay. It says, God blesses those who are merciful. For they will be shown mercy. So if you're merciful to others, if you forgive others, you will also be forgiven. So remember, God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. I know I want to be shown mercy, so I'm going to be merciful to others. And that means forgiving people when they make mistakes. No matter how hard it might be for you to forgive that person, You can do it because you got God on your side. He forgave you of all your sins. Now you need to forgive others for whatever they might have wronged you with. Well, I hope you guys have a great day. Um, If this is your first time tuning in with us, I'm so glad you're able to watch it with us. Um, If you want to start your relationship with God and you don't know where to start, start now. He offers you an invitation to have a relationship with Him. And all you have to do is receive Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. And you can repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me. I turn away from those things. God, I believe that you rose Jesus from the dead and that he is alive. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for for forgiving me. And help me to forgive others. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.